our next speaker, the pronunciation of her name confounds me, Sophie Mouij? 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 She can tell us in a second. Six-month incidence, clearance, and persistence of oral high-risk HPV infection in HIV-negative and HIV-infected men who have sex with men. Yeah. How do you say your last name? Moy is my last Moy. name. Moy. Yeah. OK, thank you very much for inviting me, and good morning, everybody. Uh, this is my disclosure slide. Our institution received funding for part of the study from Sanofi Pasteur MSD. And I will be talking about the six-month incidence, clearance, and persistence of oral high-risk HPV infection in HIV-negative and HIV-infected men who have sex with men. Oral high-risk HPV infection, and in particular HPV type 16, is associated with a subset of head and neck cancers. HIV-infected individuals are generally at increased risk for HPV infections and HPV-related cancer. However, very little is currently known about the natural history of oral HPV infection, and specifically about the associations between HIV infection, sexual behavior, and oral HPV incidence and persistence. So the objective of our study was to estimate the six-month oral high-risk HPV incidence and persistence in HIV-negative and HIV-infected men who have sex with men, MSM in brief. Also, we wanted to assess the role of HIV infection in incidence and persistence, and to examine determinants for incidence and persistence in HIV-negative and HIV-infected MSM. So we performed a prospective cohort study among HIV-negative and HIV-infected MSM, aged 18 years and older. Enrollment took place at three study sites in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, namely the Amsterdam cohort studies among MSM, the STI clinic, both at the Public Health Service of Amsterdam, and an outpatient infectious disease clinic. The enrollment period was between July 2010 and July 2011, and in total, nearly 800 participants were included. At enrollment and at the six-month visit, we collected oral rinse and gargle specimens, for which participants rinsed the mouth and gargled for approximately 30 seconds using scope mouthwash. Um, the specimens were analyzed for HPV DNA and genotypes using a highly sensitive PCR and reverse line blood assay, the SPF 10 PCR Dialipa 25 system. And the 12 HPV types shown here on the slide were considered high risk HPV and included HPV type 16. Participants completed detailed risk factor questionnaires with questions regarding socio-demographic characteristics, health-related issues, and lifetime and recent sexual behavior. So for statistical analysis, we could perform logistic regression analysis because we had only two time points of each participant, and there was little variation in follow-up time. We used generalized estimating equations to account for multiple HPV infection within one individual. We built models to assess the association between HIV infection and oral high-risk HPV incidence and persistence. And we made models to assess determinants for oral high-risk HPV incidence and persistence stratified by HIV status when possible. So this slide shows some important baseline characteristics of our study population stratified by HIV status. In total, 689 participants provided both baseline and six-month oral samples and could be included in this analysis. 60% was HIV negative and 40% was HIV infected at baseline. The median age was significantly higher in HIV infected compared to HIV negative MSM, with 47 compared to 38 years. The median number of lifetime male sex partners was also higher in HIV infected compared to HIV negative MSM, with 300 and 100 respectively. And the prevalence of oral high risk HPV infection at baseline was 15.2% in the total population, and stratified by HIV status, it was 9.4% in HIV negative and 23.9% in HIV infected MSM. So now I'd like to show you the results of the six-month oral high-risk HPV incidence. 
and incident infection was defined as a new type-specific HPV infection detected at a six-month visit, which was not detected at baseline. 56 out of 689 participants, 8.1%, had one or more incident oral high-risk HPV infections at a six-month visit. And in total, we observed 67 type-specific oral high-risk HPV infections. So this slide shows the type-specific oral high-risk HPV incidence stratified by HIV status. On the y-axis, you see the incidence in percentage from 0 to 5, and on the x-axis, you see the HPV types. The light blue bars are HIV-negative MSM, and the gray bars are HIV-infected MSM. And for HPV type 16, for example, we observed that the six-month incidence was 0.5% in HIV-negative MSM and 1.5% in HIV-infected MSM. For HPV type 18, the six-month incidence was 0.2% in HIV-negative and 2.2% in HIV-infected MSM. So, in our overall model, to estimate the effect of HIV infection on oral high-risk HPV incidence, we observed that HIV infection was independently associated with oral high-risk HPV incidence, with an adjusted odds ratio of 3.7. In our stratified analysis by HIV status, we could not identify any independent risk factors for oral high-risk HPV incidence in HIV-negative MSM, but in HIV-infected participants, we found that recent use of cannabis was associated with oral high-risk HPV incidence with an adjusted odds ratio of 2.1. Now I'll continue with the six-month oral high-risk HPV persistence. At baseline, we detected 130 type-specific oral infections in 105 participants. And of these 130 infections, we observed that 48 infections persisted up to six months, uh, which is 36.9%, and 82 infections were cleared, 63.1%. So this slide shows the type-specific oral high-risk HPV persistence stratified by HIV status. On the y-axis, you see the percentage and on the x-axis, the HPV types. I've only included those HPV types with more than five baseline infections. The yellow bars are HIV-negative MSM, and the green bars are HIV-infected MSM. And what we observed for HPV type 16, for example, was that 33% of baseline HPV 16 infections were still present at a six-month visit in HIV-negative MSM. Well, in HIV-infected MSM, 64% uh, of baseline HPV infections were still present at the six-month visit. So we looked at univariable associations for uh, the six-month oral high-risk HPV persistence, and these analyses were not stratified by HIV status due to small numbers. Uh, surprisingly, we found that increasing number of recent oral sex partners was significantly but negatively associated with oral high-risk HPV persistence, with an odds ratio of 0.3 for eight or more recent oral sex partners compared to the lowest category with two or less oral sex partners. A similar association was found for increasing number of recent anal sex partners, with again an odds ratio of 0.3 for five or more recent anal sex partners compared to one or less partners. And also, anal intercourse in the last six months was negatively associated with uh, oral persistence. In our multivariable model, we found that HIV infection was not independently associated with oral high-risk HPV persistence, with an adjusted odds ratio of 1.2. Stratified analysis by HIV status were not feasible due to limited power. And in our overall model, to uh, determine risk factors for um, persistent oral high-risk HPV infection, we did not identify any significant risk factors. So in conclusion, 
the six-month incidence of oral high-risk HPV infection in MSM was relatively high, with 8.1%. HIV infection was strongly and independently associated with oral high-risk HPV incidence. We found that recent use of cannabis was independently associated with oral high-risk HPV incidence in HIV-infected MSM, and nearly two-thirds of oral HPV infections were cleared within six months. We did not uh, identify an independent effect of HIV infection on oral high-risk HPV persistence, which might be due to limited power. Important here to note is that the clinical implications of oral high-risk HPV infections and of persistent oral high-risk HPV infections are currently unknown. So more research is needed on the role of HPV infection in HPV-related head and neck cancer and on the question whether HPV vaccination will be able to prevent HPV-related head and neck cancer. So finally, I would like to thank everybody on this slide and thank you very much for your attention. Any comments or any quick question? Please. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, presumably some of your MSM uh, had sex only with men and some had sex with both men and women. I'm wondering what, if you were able to look at that subset and if there were any differences with regard to behavioral factors and your outcome of persistence and whether or not that's a potential confounder for uh, those uh, interesting results. Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, within our cohort, um, they're all uh, men who have sex with men, and they have very little uh, sexual intercourse with women. So we do ask that in our questionnaire, but the numbers are so small that we do not look at that specifically. So I could not uh, stratify by that. Hi, Amber DeSouza from Hopkins. Interesting presentation. I wanted to ask about your risk factors for persistence. It was surprising that uh, recent sexual behavior was a predictor. And I know you only have two time points, but we know that incident infections usually clear more quickly than persistent infection. So I'm assuming that that's a surrogate for which prevalent infections at baseline were incident. And that the reason you see an association between recent sexual behavior and persistence was because those infections that were more likely to clear were more likely recently acquired. Have you thought about that or will you be following that? Um, yeah, at the moment we only have two time points, that's correct. And we hope to, uh, or we're planning to look at the two years incidence and persistence for HPV infections, so every six months. So um, hopefully we'll be able to look at more uh, specific relations with those data. Thank you very much.